Hey everybody, David Feeder here, coming back at you with another Pulse Chain Validator video. Uh, this one's actually a security update. Uh, there was a, like a vulnerability for Linux that recently was discovered, and it's kind of a big one. Um, I, I, as soon as I saw the video, I was like, wow, that's crazy. So there's basically one command that, that we need to run that will protect our systems to stop this attack. So let me pull up my screen here. So I tweeted this out, that Pulse Chain validators should consider running the following command on Linux machines. And then this is the command right here. And I'm also gonna put it down in the description of this video. So you can just copy and paste it into your terminal uh, on your validator. What this does is this, this stops and then disables the software. It's called the Cups Browse D. And this is like automatic printer software for Linux. And this is what has the bug. And because of this, the way the software works with really old printers, now a remote attacker can basically send a UDP packet to your Linux machine and they can try to like break in if the software is up and running. So that's really bad. So by running this command, this will that'll stop it. That'll turn off the software. Um, so highly recommend that. And one other, so that so that's the big thing, right? This is really what the video is about: is this really critical vulnerability here that you should protect yourself against. Now, one other thing we can do that's just kind of to be paranoid is if we go to my GitLab, so gitlab.com/slash David Feeder, and you can scroll all the way down to the bottom to the Pulse Chain Validators, my my project here, and then we want to go to the the Install Validator. And basically right here on line five, there's just a new firewall rule we can make. It's a sudo ufw deny 631. This is the, the port number that the vulnerability's on. So I'm gonna put this in the description of this video below as well. All you need is this little piece that I'm highlighting in blue right here. It's just sudo ufw deny 631. If you run that on the terminal of your validator, that'll shut down that port. That's the port that that printer software was communicating on. So that'll close that just, just in case the software ever like restarted itself. If there was like an update to Linux and then this gets patched and then re-enabled and you didn't know it by blocking this port, it just kind of helps prevent that no traffic should land on there at all, period. And then one other thing you can do too is if you have like a on your Wi-Fi router or your network firewall, like your, your hardware firewall, you can log into the website for that. And you can also block port 631 on your physical hardware appliance. So that's something I'd recommend as well. It depends what kind you have. You know, if you've got like an Asus router or, you know, there's a, there's a million different brands, right? But so, you know, but you, you can block that on your firewall as well. So that way it even stops it from coming in from your internet connection, like completely. So pretty cool. Um, so those are the two basically things right there. Again, the link in uh, the two lines will be in the description below that you can just copy and paste right in your terminal. That'll help protect your machine. Uh, so that's that's the big security update that I highly recommend everybody takes care of as soon as you can. And moving on to vouch.run. Uh, this is going good. This is up and running still on testnet. I'm working with Jexa on testing it out, and so far so good. All the software's up and running. Uh, they just got their audit back the other day, and they—I I don't think there's anything critical. Um, I didn't see the actual, like, the document yet in the Telegram, so I'm still—I don't know if they're going to share the actual testnet audit. I don't know if they're going to do another round after that, and then they'll make it public. But either way, it's on testnet, so you can try it out. You can go to app dot vouch dot run and then on the pulse chain test net you can connect your wallet and you can stake some pulse and then you can unstake your v pulse like your liquid staking tokens so pretty cool i'm kind of bullish on this i'm very excited this is going to be awesome I'm, I'm very excited to try it out because then people who you know want to be validators but don't want to run the hardware don't want to pay for service or anything like that and they want to have liquid coins liquid staking tokens so there you go. So Ethereum's got a whole bunch of these, right? So 
know, this will be the first uh, truly like decentralized one that I'm aware of here. Um, yeah, so pretty cool. So definitely check that out. Try it out on Testnet. And yeah, last but not least, I'm sure you already know, but I'll just wrap it up here with if you want to be a validator yourself, if you want the hardware, you can come to my website, validatorstore.com. And if you scroll all the way down, these are the hardware kits here with the little the nook and the screen, keyboard, mouse, and everything you need. Uh, just go all the way to the bottom and just fill out an order form if you want one. And then I'll send, I'll send you an email and get you hooked up. And then, yeah, I got my free tutorials. All the, my software is here on my GitLab and then tutorial videos on how to run everything. If you just want to learn yourself and try it out. Uh, I've got cloud hosting. So if you want me to run a hardware validator on your behalf, I've you've got this as a service here, uh, either $300 a month or 3000 for a year. That saves you 600 bucks a year. Like you get two months for free if you basically lock it in for a year. And yeah, so this is kind of like the hands-off approach. If you're kind of a, want to be a big validator and you want your own dedicated solution, this is pretty cool. And yeah, you can hire me if you need technical support. Um, if you've already got a hardware kit, um, we've got the port forwarding routers. You can get a Peplink router from the mobile must have store. Those guys are cool. And then we've got the validator NFTs with the DGEN protocol, where if you basically you put in pulse, you get an NFT, and then that pulse from the NFT is put into a validator. And then that kind of pays out as you hold it. So those are cheap and fun. Um, only half a million pulse each for an NFT. And there's the .pls domains. If you want your own like you know, PLS domain name for your wallet, I think you can also use it like a regular domain and you can put your IP address in there and, and use it on your validator if you wanted. And then there's also no IPs, which is like a, a paid service, very affordable, that gives you your own .com. So you don't have to buy a, uh, an IP address from your internet company if you want to be a validator at home. So, so that's all here on the on the website. Um, let me go check out. Should we check out GoPulse? Yeah, let's check out GoPulse. How are we looking? So Pulse, yeah, looking good from the all time low here. We're up sixty two percent, five three six. Pulse X is 308. We're up 247% off the bottom. Incentive token is doing really good. $2.74. It's up almost 600%. And PHEX has been ripping a penny. It touched a penny and a half yesterday. I think it was doing fantastic. So, yeah, awesome. Up 147% off the bottom there. So, pretty cool. Pretty cool. Let's take a look at the validators real quick. Uh, 48,000 total stakes, which has given us almost 10% APR. So very nice. And 10% more coins every year by staking. And the total stake pulse is 1.5 trillion. And validatorstore.com still number one for the graffiti. So appreciate everybody out there running that with us. That's awesome. And then the value of one validator stake is $1,700. So it's almost getting to the point where one stake, again, it'll be worth more than the hardware kit, right? Because the actual box is like $2,000 if you want to buy one. And that little box will hold, you know, a thousand stakes or more. But, uh, you know, we've seen this as high as $5,000, right? So, you know, you, you, while the, the stakes are cheaper than the actual hardware itself, that's pretty good deal. Pretty cool. So, all right, guys, that, that's about it. Just wanted to do that quick security update. You know, go ahead and run this command and then go ahead and run this little command. And that kind of tightens things up for now until they patch the software, but we'll be all set. So, all right, guys, I'll talk to you later. Have a good one.